Welcome to our Bible study series by HelpfulScripture.com. In this video, we review the 10 most relevant Bible verses about predestination. If you want to study this topic more, then be sure to click the link below to our website. Our website, HelpfulScripture.com, has many more passages on this topic, and hundreds of additional topics. Also, if you want to share the Bible with others, then click the like button and share this video with your friends. Now let's get started. Passage number 1. The first verse on the subject of predestination is Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and without defect before him in love, having predestined us for adoption as children through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his desire, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he freely gave his favor in the beloved. Passage number 2. The second verse in our study of predestination is found in Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through 32. It says, We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Whom he predestined, those he also called. Whom he called, those he also justified. Whom he justified, those he also glorified. What then shall we say about these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who didn't spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how would he not also with him freely give us all things? Passage number 3. For our third verse, we turn in our Bible to Romans chapter 9, verses 9 through 24. It reads, For this is a word of promise, at the appointed time I will come, and Sarah will have a son. Not only so, but Rebekah also conceived by one, by our father Isaac. For being not yet born, neither having done anything good or bad, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him who calls, it was said to her, the elder will serve the younger. Even as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? May it never be. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it is not of him who wills, nor of him who runs, but of God who has mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, For this very purpose I caused you to be raised up, that I might show in you my power, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. So then, he has mercy on whom he desires, and he hardens whom he desires. You will say then to me, why does he still find fault? For who withstands his will? But indeed, O oh man, who are you to reply against God? Will the thing formed ask him who formed it, why did you make me like this? Or hasn't the potter a right over the clay, from the same lump to make one part a vessel for honor, and another for dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction? and that he might make known the riches of his glory on vessels of mercy, which he prepared beforehand for glory, us, whom he also called, not from the Jews only, but also from the Gentiles. Passage number 4. This is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11 through 12. The scripture says, We were also assigned an inheritance in him, having been foreordained according to the purpose of him who does all things after the counsel of his will, to the end that we should be to the praise of his glory, we who had before hoped in Christ. Passage number 5. The fifth verse is from Acts chapter 13, verse 48. The Bible says, as the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of God. As many as were appointed to eternal life believed. Congratulations. You've made it halfway through our study. So let's pause here for a moment. I want to remind you again that if you want to study this topic more, then be sure to visit the link in the description below. The link will take you to our website, helpfulscripture.com, where you can study more Bible verses on the subject of predestination, and hundreds of other topics. Now let's continue our study on predestination. Passage number 6 is from John chapter 6, verses 37 through 40. It says, All those whom the Father gives me will come to me. He who comes to me I will in no way throw out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of my Father who sent me, 
that of all he has given to me I should lose nothing, but should raise him up at the last day. This is the will of the one who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Passage number 7. The seventh verse is found in Acts chapter 4, verses 23 through 30. The Bible says, being let go, they came to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard it, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, O Lord, you are God, who made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and all that is in him, who by the mouth of your servant David, said, Why do the nations rage, and the peoples plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth take a stand, and the rulers take counsel together, against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, to do whatever your hand and your counsel foreordained to happen. Now, Lord, look at their threats, and grant to your servants to speak your word with all boldness, while you stretch out your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. Passage number 8. The eighth verse on the subject of predestination is from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 2. It reads, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the chosen ones who are living as foreigners in the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, in sanctification of the Spirit, that you may obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his blood, grace to you and peace be multiplied. Passage number 9. Our ninth verse is from John chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. The passage states, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only born Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God didn't send his Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world should be saved through him. He who believes in him is not judged. He who doesn't believe has been judged already, because he has not believed in the name of the only born Son of God. This is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and men loved the darkness rather than the light, for their works were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and doesn't come to the light, lest his works would be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his works may be revealed, that they have been done in God. Passage number 10. Our tenth and final verse on the subject of predestination is from Romans chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. It says, I ask then, did God reject his people? May it never be. For I also am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God didn't reject his people, whom he foreknew. Or don't you know what the scripture says about Elijah? How he pleads with God against Israel, Lord, they have killed your prophets. They have broken down your altars. I am left alone, and they seek my life. But how does God answer him? I have reserved for myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Even so too at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no longer of works, otherwise grace is no longer grace. But if it is of works, it is no longer grace, otherwise work is no longer work. What then? That which Israel seeks for, that he didn't obtain, but the chosen ones obtained it, and the rest were hardened. According as it is written, God gave them a spirit of stupor, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, to this very day. David says, let their table be made a snare, a trap, a stumbling block, and a retribution to them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see. Always keep their backs bent. This concludes our Bible study on the topic of predestination. If you want to study this topic more, then click the link below to visit our website, where we have many more Bible verses related to predestination and hundreds of other Bible subjects. Also, remember to like the video and share it with your friends on social media to help spread the gospel. Thanks again for listening and God bless.